happy to live in Virginia. Um, there are things here that, uh, like us, uh, ticks, uh, ticks are getting worse. The summer of 2016 may be the worst year for Lyme disease ever, and there are reasons for that that I won't go into right now, but the geography of Lyme over years has been spreading southward. Uh, we have always in Virginia had a problem with tick-borne Rocky Mountain spotted fever, tularemia, and ehrlichiosis, of which there are apparently two cases in my neighborhood, so-called Rocky Mountain spotless fever. More on this in a moment. Mosquitoes are annoying but not dangerous this year. Next year we probably will have Zika carrying mosquitoes. Here we have always had a small numerical problem with West Nile, which is one of these diseases where 90% of people who get it never even know it. Anyway, I'm only going to talk about prevention. I'm happy to talk about diagnosis and treatment, but you got to buy me a beer. Now, why some hams have why some hams have trouble with ticks? Ticks tend to live in tall grass, which is why Larry is correct in saying that I don't think we're going to have a problem with ticks this year. We didn't last year, although the year before I had the opportunity to remove a tick from the butt of one of our colleagues. Uh, this is Marshall Manor, which is where we have one of our repeaters, and this is Tick City. So All right. Tall grass, tall weeds. Tall stuff, but that, not entirely, not exclusively. Keep an eye out. Five messages. One, avoid ticks and mosquitoes. Two, do careful tick checks. Three, remove ticks carefully. Four, if you get a bite, put a, a, a ballpoint pen ring around it. Just keep an eye on it for a couple of days. And most important, and I'll say it again, remain alert for fevers, with or without rashes, for which you don't have another cause, in central Virginia in the summertime. That's an indication to see a doctor. There are three ticks that we're worried about. One is the lone star tick, obviously, um, and only the female has the star. The other is the black leg tick. All stages of that tick have black legs. And then finally, the dog tick. The lone star tick is the most common. It transmits ehrlichiosis, again, Rocky Mountain spotless fever, and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And uh, very entertaining, and this was work done at UVA, um, some tick bites confer on some people a delayed allergy to red meat, which uh, where the allergic response occurs a little later after eating. The dog tick uh, does transmit Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and the black leg tick is the one that spreads Lyme disease. Uh, and this is what they look like. Uh, they're small. What can I tell you? Now, the new players on the block, just for purposes of discussion, Aedes aegypti. Uh, Joe, this is a really ugly mosquito, um, which carries a, a lot of stuff and is currently present on the Gulf Coast, um, Florida, et cetera, um, and will carry, uh, does, can carry Zika. And there's some lab work that shows that it is easy to infect and it transmits pretty easily. The new kid on the block for us is Aedes albopictus, which actually spreads all the way up the East Coast. Uh, they're in Richmond, they're in Washington, they're even further north. And this mosquito can, in the lab, be shown to carry uh, Zika virus, and we'll see what happens. So again, not an issue for us this year. But next year, when we have more people who've acquired Zika, say at the Olympics, who return and then get bitten while they're viremic, uh, we, we, we may have a problem. Culex has been around for a long time. Culex is the one that bites you at dawn and dusk um, and carries other stuff. OK, so what do you do? Well. Uh, this says style tips for the bug averse. Uh, long sleeve shirts and long pants. Bug repellent on clothing. Light colored clothing. This is not a defensive measure, but it makes the ticks easier to spot. Tuck your pants into your socks or into your boots. The ticks start low. They crawl up until they find skin. So if you've got your pants tucked in, they have to crawl further. I want to talk about permethrin for a moment. 
This is a uh, synthetic version of a chrysanthemum uh, compound. And I, I always thought that it was a repellent. It's not. It's an insecticide. And you can get clothing that has permethrin built in and it's supposed to last through 60 washes. Um, it, uh, as I say, it doesn't repel stuff, although I have a permethrin infused hat that is repellent to my wife. However, um, it's a style, you're right. Um, anyway, permethrin sprayed clothing is not as effective as DEET, which is a repellent uh, um, sprayed clothing. And uh, I don't know, I, I have the nice hat. I, yeah. Okay, DEET. 30% is what you want. Deep Woods Off, I have no conflicts of interest, is the uh, brand name that's usually used, and it's the one that's most common in the stores around here. Um, it is felt by the feds to be more effective than the alternative that I'm going to show you in a moment. But there are also data to suggest equivalence. Um, the data suggests that it's, it's less toxic than was originally thought. It can be a topical irritant, so some people get a rash from it. And what you do if you're going to use it is you apply it to exposed skin. Do not put it on under your clothing. Now, picaridin is interesting. Uh, the 20% picaridin, which is available as Sawyer's Fisherman's Formula picaridin, is the only brand I've seen in Charlottesville, and the only place I've seen it is at Target. And I think I got the last can. And, and Amazon. Oh well, yeah. So. <laughs> and the outdoor store in Barrett's Road has it. Oh, they do. They did not. That's uh, thank you. They did not when I looked a while ago. Um, and uh, Consumer Reports, did, they they never present their raw data, but they suggested that it was equally effective in repelling ticks and mosquitoes. Again, the feds think DEET's better for ticks. And then lemon eucalyptus. Probably less effective, but uh, seems to work for mosquitoes. So after field day, remove your clothing promptly. Do wait until you get home, please. <laughs> Safety, right? This is an aesthetic tip. Uh, careful tick check is better and uh, can be more fun with other people. Uh, especially consider again crawling up from socks and whatnot. Uh, the groin area, the um, Axilla, interestingly, the thigh, and as we know, unfortunately, the buttocks. Uh, launder your clothing, bathe within two hours. This also has aesthetic advantages. Gentle removal of the tick, and I very strongly stress this. Um, don't ever squeeze a tick. Uh, I have seen tick-borne tularemia spread into the eye by squeezing a tick and having the what tick. Is, what is the best way to remove it? I'm, thank you for asking. Uh, and follow the tick bite daily and uh, let's see. So uh, Terry, uh, KT4UO, gave me this a couple of years ago and I'll just read you the yellow part. It's a song, Joe. And I'd like to check you for ticks. Ooh, you never know where one might be and ooh, there's lots of places that are hard to reach. <laughs> Why promptness is a virtue. Ticks have to be attached for, on average, in animal experiments, 36 hours to transmit Lyme. So you get rid of your ticks, you're really saving yourself a lot of uh, uh, problems. But um, the data are not huge in humans, but I think it's probably true. It takes a while for the virus to get back up into the salivary glands. But only 24 hours for those spotless fever thingies and only six hours to transmit Rocky Mountain spotted fever. So as you uh, asked, um, you remove ticks, one, the, the traditional way is to use a needle nose uh, forceps and very gently pull the tick out with gentle and prolonged pressure. So traditionally it's with a needle nosed uh, forceps. It's so small it's hard to even identify their head, isn't it? Well you don't have to identify their head, you just have to pull the tick slowly. Okay. More on this in a moment. But you can use broad-based tweezers, and these happen to be sort of semi-official tick removal tweezers. And then there is a variety of tick removal devices also available at a lot of the stores around here. Uh, I have seen no data 
suggesting that these are in any way better than tweezers, although I suspect it reduces the risk of the tick squish. So grip the tick as close to the skin as possible, pull gently but consistently, and it'll take about two minutes. As JEC said a couple of years ago, gently convince the tick that it'll either let go or will lose its head. If the head does come off, leave it alone. Don't try and dig it out, don't mess with it. That results in uh, super infection with strep and stuff like that. Do not apply petroleum jelly. Do not apply lighter fluid or ether. Do not apply a lighted cigarette. Uh, or the antenna tip of a keyed down HT. <laughs> Definitely do not apply ether or lighter fluid and then a cigarette. No, no, it doesn't do a thing. Uh, it just makes them mad. Okay. So do not. If, you, if the head is still in there, does yes. it, uh, my wife just had it. We just got back here from Alaska. Been out of Virginia 14 years, she got one. Uh, right in a place that Brad Paisley would have loved to see it. But uh, the question is, you know, the head came off. I said, honey, we don't want to mess with this because I knew that much because of infection. And uh, so we put a circle around it. But I guess the point is, does the clock stop ticking for most of the transmitted diseases yes. if the body's removed? Yes, because a dead tick head is not squirting okay. stuff out. Um, okay, so well. Well, it's cosmetic, but there's often an inflammatory response. Yeah, she's putting antibiotic ointment on it, so. Okay, there are data to show that probably not useful, will the but head that's okay. Off eventually? The head will support, you, the, the body will get rid of the head. I mean, your body will get rid of the tick's okay. head. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, you're familiar with the phrase tight as a tick, extremely close with one's money. If you have ever tried to separate a tick, from an animal or some person's skin, you know what tight is. Final advice, don't confuse ticks with chiggers, which are larval mites, they're very annoying, they don't spread disease. And this is the single most important thing I'm, I'm gonna say to you again. Take very, and I hate antibiotics. I, I'm an infectious disease doc. But, um, I hate antibiotics, but a fever in central Virginia in the summertime for which you do not have another diagnosis is for most of us an indication for antibiotics. And some of these diseases are serious. Some of these are potentially lethal if not treated. Uh, and the treatment, which happens to work for all of them, if one tolerates it, is doxycycline. However, do be careful. Doxycycline is itself a photosensitizer, which makes you more prone to sunburn. Thank you for your attention. Questions? Okay, anyway, everything I've said is in the handout on the front page. Sir? Uh, one thing you have to be careful about with D is it will destroy <coughs> some types of plastic, like oh. your eyeglass frames or. Yeah. I did not oh, yeah, D will melt a lot of stuff. Oh, that's yeah. very. Yeah. We actually had uses for that uh, in the bush. <coughs> So you're saying deed on your clothing in addition to your skin is a waste, just your skin. Deed on your clothing is fine. Yeah. That, that, that acts as a repellent. Don't put deed on your clothing. That, that, that asks for your Jewish clothing. Another one over there in the corner. Oh, sorry. Maybe we can turn the lights back on. Yes? You mentioned uh, a Russian uh, a fever rather in the summertime. <clears throat> And I just wanted to know, I had a severe case of Lyme disease in November, and the uh, medics told me that it was flu for a month, and I ended up in UVA hospital with a parent, quite severe paralysis as a result. Um, but it does occur uh, at other times, and uh, I'm living proof that you can get a really bad case of Lyme disease in November. I expect that is true. I will say my own we have seen a significant uptick in Lyme disease in the last five years. No question about no, it. No, no, no pun intended. Yeah, I'm just no, 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 no question. No question about it. Uh, about the remedy allergy? We've actually had two patients come through in the last five years with this red meat yes. allergy thing. Very interesting. Very the, the tick saliva contains a compound, the name of which escapes me which uh, is antigenically related to a yeah. protein in the red meat. Michael.
Oh, I'm sorry. I had a, I had just a, shout. I had a doctor in a, one of these quick doc places tell me the same thing. When they get people in there with a fever in the summer, There's antibiotics. Yeah, I, I'm sorry about that. Immediate doxycycline. Because <laughs> as you, yeah, we in the ID game we call it doxycycline deficiency disease. <laughs> and um, I mean, you know, antibiotics are one of the very few medications for which there is feedback from the individual to society. And you've probably heard about the recent isolate from one human being and two pigs in the United States of a an E. coli which is resistant to what we used to thought of as our drug of last resort, calistin. Wow. Um, and, and this is, you know, that's, this is common in India. So I really don't like the use of, unnecessary use of antibiotics. In this particular setting, this time of the year, this part of the country, Now yeah, you don't, you mentioned many times you won't get the rash, the Lyme disease, but you always would get a fever or something, right? Uh, an excellent question. Uh, if you do antibody testing for Lyme, which is kind of, again, um, you find antibody indicating prior infection in lots of people who have no history. Sir? Yeah, I was just going to say, I have one additional recommendation, and that is that when you uh, get home, when you, if you've had a lot, been in a place where there's lots of ticks, when you get home, take off your clothes and put them in a pile in a place that is in the middle of your floor, white floor, ideally. <laughs> and then once that happens, take them outside and set them in the sun for about two hours and all the ticks drop off. I at one time was doing a lot of field work in a field where if I looked down and saw 10 ticks on the front of me, I didn't bother to knock them off because two steps later I'd have 10 more ticks. And uh, they got to the point where they were starting to show up around my wife's desk at work. <laughs> and uh, we realized that the laundry was sort of our enemy there. And, but once we put the things out in the, out in the sun for an hour or two, we never had the problem again. So. What I do when I'm working in the yard and I come in is I go right to the laundry room and I take all my clothes and I put it in the dryer on high for Ooh. 10 minutes. Yeah. Torture the little. <laughs> yeah. I agree with the choice is going to be 104 degree hot tub. <laughs> yeah. these, these, all sound, these all sound very reasonable and actually fairly free of side effects. Sounds good.